And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success Morning Coffee. What's going on? It is Tuesday. We are going to continue along with this. It's really cool to get to see you guys. Wanted to thank people before we get here. Good morning, Nikki. Um, if you want to subscribe, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, yesterday, I sent out some stuff. Subscribers get a couple things like you subscribe on Patreon, you subscribe on TikTok. Uh, I'll send you out a some stickers, a coaster, some stuff. Just make sure you hit that subscribe button. We got four right now trying to get to 10. It'd be awesome to have you as a subscriber here so that you make sure you subscribe. You don't miss anything. What is up, Michelle? Um, thank you for everyone for being here. Just another morning of us talking about stuff that uh, we're going through. And one of the things that I was thinking about this morning was very interesting. Um, not very interesting. It's, it's the same thing. Like, I think that what you guys don't understand a lot of times, or you do understand, but you're getting the gist of it if you've been here every single day is the fact that success, motivation, positivity is a process. A, it's something that you have to work on every single day. It's something that you never forget, something that is constantly on your mind, something that you continually work on because it is not easy to be a positive person in every single situation or aspect of your life. And so that is what I have to work on on a daily basis. You guys on YouTube, can you just tell me if you hear static? I feel like there might be static, but maybe there's not. I don't know. Anyway, that is it. It is a process. It is something that you have the control over, the thing that you must be willing to work on, because if you do not work on it, it won't get any better. And so I think that that's what I go out every single day and try to do. Now, it's difficult. It isn't easy. I have to be thinking, but what I have to do is I have to realize that there are certain things that I can control and I can control myself. I can control my thoughts. I can control the way that I handle things. I can control the way that I work through the process, but I cannot control the outside forces, the negative things that are outside of me. And there are going to be people who are pissed off all the time and there are going to be people who are grouchy and there are going to be people who complain about stuff. And I fall into that category of once in a while. But when I do, I realize that I don't feel great about myself. Like I start to really think about the way that I react to things, the way that I work out the problems, and it doesn't make me feel good about it. I want you to understand that, that it is difficult, it is tough, it is hard, it's not easy, but it is well worth it to try and find those things every single day. And how do I do it? And what do I do? I surround myself with people who are positive people. I talk to people who are positive people. I problem solve the situations. I don't accept the fact that people act the way that they do. And if they are bothering me or bringing me down, I get away from them. Understand that. I see that, Michelle. Think, um, you know, here's something. Michelle just said that she is... Uh, Deactivating TikTok and taking a little break from TikTok for a while. Understandable. And um, I think that one of the things with TikTok is like, I'm here live on TikTok right now. And it's funny because there's so much growth right now, but they're showing just zero people watching it on TikTok. And people are in and out, and that's the way that it is. But we get lost in it. And I spend a lot of time being lost in TikTok myself, where I'm sitting there just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. What's going on, Renee? And I am... I'm lost. Like, that's all it is. I'm just sitting there constantly scrolling. And can it be good for you? And can it be bad for you? And what can it be for you? And what does it do for you? And sometimes you just have to take a break from that. I spent a lot of time when I was on TikTok in the beginning answering every single comment, doing everything I can to make sure that everyone knows that I'm there and that I'm interacting with them. And I see every single comment, but I just stopped taking the time because it was overwhelming. I am grateful for every single supporter that I have, but I understand, Michelle, what you're saying. I get it. Sometimes you need to take a break. And that's kind of where I'm at with that. We have this perception versus reality situation where a lot of people see your videos and they think that you're very popular and that they should follow you and that, you know, you're killing it. I get those messages every once in a while. Hey, you're killing it on social media. Good job. Blah, 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 blah. 
And the reality is, is I'm not killing it on social media. But you see the video and you think that that's what it is. It's like, hey, I see your face every other, other time, every other scroll or whatever, no matter where it is. And it is tough. You get fatigued with that. Like you, people tell you those things. But what I realized is that it's not really, it's not really that. Like that doesn't mean a whole lot to me. What really means something to me is that there are those people who comment in the background, people who say the things, people that are there. I appreciate you all. And I may not respond to your comments as much as I used to, but it's just because it's overwhelming. It's one of those things that it just gets a little bit crazy. And I am by far no big creator. I haven't looked at my podcast stats in a while, and I got a couple more days before I do, but I have this sneaking suspicion that it's, they're, not, they're not huge. But the people that I reach and the audience that relies on me and wants me around and interacts with me, I'm very grateful for all of you. So I appreciate that. I know we went off on a tangent here, but I understand that. I get it. I get why you may need to take a break from whatever social media platform you're on. What's up, Sharon? How's it going? Thanks for joining. Um, that's the thing. Like you have to be willing to take that break from whatever it is if you need to. And so, you know, I applaud you for doing it. I get it. Yesterday's episode um, labeled... Uh, what did I do? Make shit happen. Thinking about doing a shirt with make shit happen on it, because I think that a lot of us have to realize that we have to make it happen. We are the people who have to do the work. We are the people who have to go out there, put the one foot forward in order for something to happen. But a lot of times we expect other people to do it for us. And we think that it's just going to happen. Um, and you talk and, and that's the one thing that, you know, that perception versus reality kind of ties into. It's like we sit there and we see the fruits of the labor, but we don't see the labor. And we're always looking at what other people are doing. And we're always realizing that, or we're not realizing that they are actually busting their butt behind the scenes. And I've done a lot of things to make my life easier to, you know, with this podcast, with processing it and all that stuff, or whatever it's called, you know, like a lot of people are, well, this isn't a podcast, it's live there. Well, it is a podcast, because there's a podcast part of it. There's also a video part of it. And I enjoy doing the live thing because I enjoy being able to speak and think off the top of my head and react to comments and things like that. So it's, I enjoy doing it. It makes it easy. I've set up the sound so it's pretty good. You know, it's, it could be better. I could have someone edit it. I did have my friend Jay do it for a while. When I do an interview, I typically do, but I haven't done an interview in a while. And it's like, this is a process that's allowed me to make it happen and do it every single day without having to worry about doing more right? Because I already feel like I do enough. You get a nice good camera, you get a good mic, you get a good sound system, you, you get everything sound treated so that all you have to do is just go straight to it. And that's why I've done what I've done. But there are things that have moved me. There's things that help me process the situation. So ask yourself this one. As we get started here, think about this. Ask yourself this one. Is what I'm about to do today connected to what I'm going to value over the long term? There's this movie called The Girl Next Door, and it has one of my favorite actors in it. And it's, you know, I mean, the, the subject matter of it's a little bit controversial, probably, or maybe not. I don't know. It depends on what you think. But the actor says, what you got to ask yourself is, is the juice worth the squeeze? And basically what that means is if you don't get into it, if you don't believe in it, if you don't are totally bought into the situation, you're never going to do it. Is, it. is it something that you're going to value over the long term? Is it going to be worth it in the long term? So think about that. Is what you want to do worth it? Are you going to value it? Okay. Exactly. Sharon says lots of people want, it, want what others have but are not willing to do the work or temporary sacrifice. And that's it. That is, that's 100% it. Is it worth it to them? And if it's worth it enough to them, they will sacrifice a little bit to make it happen. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Remember, no one else can do what you do the way you do it. That is your superpower. We're all a little bit different. Did you notice that? Why do we judge other people for who they are and what they do? There's, there's a couple different reasons for it. And I think the biggest one that I've always seen in our judgment towards other people is jealousy 
of what they are, what they're doing, how they're getting it, what they're doing. There is no rhyme or reason for anything that you do. And social media is a big one for that because if you look at it, the biggest video that I've ever got the most views on, which I think that's how a lot of people gauge success on, on things, is, is I got 1.2 million views on a video that I posted two years later, the exact same thing. Wasn't even my video. Was just me reacting to someone else's video. There's no rhyme or reason that that thing got 1.2 million views. There's no rhyme or reason why it only got like 2,000 the first time. The fact of the matter is, is that putting that one foot forward, doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing, you have to do it. If you don't, you sit on the sidelines and you sit there and you judge other people. And you're jealous of those people because they got something that you didn't even do. I didn't have to post that video. I didn't have to get the 1.2 million views. If I didn't post it, I wouldn't have got the 1.2 million views. But it happened, right? Because I did it. Whatever you're afraid of, do it. Do it scared. Don't worry about it. I mean, this is as simple as a TikTok video, which is a little ridiculous in my mind that it gets 1.2 million views. No gauge of success, but if you're gauging your success off of what other people are doing, you got a problem. You must gauge your success off of what you're doing. Compete with yourself. Uh, your why, yes, exactly. Your why has to be big enough to move and achieve what we want. You have to buy into it. You have to be willing to make that move. Exactly. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. I think that a lot of people get stuck in the past. They think that the, the past is something that defines you, something that changes you, something that stops you from moving forward. I did this in the past. There's no way I can do this in the future. And I think that the reality is our circumstances do not define us. I've told you that millions of times. It does not define you. Just because you did something. Okay, Sharon, thanks for hanging. Just because you did something in the past does not mean that you can't do something in the future. Just because something happened to you and stopped you then doesn't mean that you can't do it now. You have to be willing to say, screw that. Your past does not define you. Your parents didn't have money, so you can't make money? That doesn't make sense. You, you, you're poor, so, you know, like you're, you would come from a poor upbringing, you're going to be poor your whole life. We can't just accept the fact that that's what it is. Um, my mom and dad went to prison, or my dad went to prison, or something like that, I'm going to be a no good, and blah, blah, blah. So-and-so was a drug addict, I'm going to be no good. Like, you can't make those decisions. You can't say that those things define who you are. I had a drug problem before. It means I can't, ha I can't not have one, right? Like there's all these situations and that's just a hypothetical situation, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it. I wasn't good at math. You know, like that was my biggest thing. I wasn't good at math. So there's no reason that there's no way that I'm going to pass the math class. There's no way that I'm going to get through college. There's all these things that you tell yourself that you can't do. And the reality is, is that you are stopping yourself. Like we said yesterday, you're your biggest bully. You're the person who's going to stop yourself in your tracks because you don't believe in yourself. I didn't believe in myself when I was in high school that I could get through math. So I didn't do it. And then I went and changed tires for 11 years and I went back to college. And guess what I had to do? I had to do the math because that's a requirement of the degree that I wanted to get. And what did I do? I started right at the very bottom and I worked my way up. And when I say I started at the very bottom, there is math 15. That is like the lowest of the low in math class. That is like before algebra. That's like basic math, like adding fractions and crap like that. Because I wasted my time and didn't do the work. And then I had to do the work. And when I finally did it, I understood why I needed to do it. Your past does not define you. Just because I thought I wasn't good at it didn't mean I couldn't be good at it. You have to be willing to do the work. Never look back. Look back, though. When you do look back, look back at the fact that you can to be successful in anything, you don't have to be different. You simply have to be what most people are not. Consistent, determined, and willing to work for it. You have to be willing to work your butt off. We talked about that intrinsic motivation versus the extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic comes from within, right? You have to be willing to bust your butt. You have to want it. It has to come from you. It has to come from within. It cannot come from an outside source. People who are driven by outside things typically do not become successful because they don't want it bad enough. If your significant other wanted you to go to college 
and you didn't want to, but you're doing it for them, do you think you're going to be very good at it? Probably not because it's not something that you want. Maybe it is what you want. And if it is what you want, you have to be willing to work for it. It has to come from within. If it doesn't come within, you're screwed. It's not saying that it can't work, but the choice, the chances of you being more happy about it, if it comes from within, than from an outside source, is 100% better. I think about this when I think about my kid. I'm going to do this so that I can get that, right? Like, I'm going to go take out the garbage so I can get a piece of candy. I'm going to do the dishes so that I can watch my iPad. That's an outside thing that's coming in. So when we reward with outside prizes, that typically does not work. Instead of I want to do the dishes because I want to do it because I want to clean house because I want to, you know, those types of things. Small disciplines, this is something that I work on every single day. I have to tell you, this is how I got good at what I do. Small disciplines repeated with consistency every single day lead to great achievements gained over time. This thing about being consistent, about showing up, about doing the work every single day is something that is something that is very important because the consistency of doing it over and over again, making sure that you're creating the same successes over again, doing it, you don't have to do it the exact same way every single time, but I will tell you, it is very helpful to build a process and continue to do that process over and over again because if you do not, you may not make it happen you know, you may not be successful at what happens with me. And I was talking to someone about this yesterday is I've gotten my process so honed in the way that I do things like selling a product, talking to customers, doing what I do that I'm bored. Like, what can I do? What is m- going to challenge me to want to do more? I mean, cause I'm doing more, I'm doing as much as I can, but like, I'm kind of like topped out and that's easy to say, but the only, there's only one more thing that I can do like every single day. And that's make more money. How can I make more money? And it's tough because it's not challenging because I get through my day so quickly. The only thing that is slowing me down is the amount of time that I have in between what I'm doing. Because say I have an appointment at 11 o'clock and I don't have one till one, there's a little space in between there. So what can I do to challenge myself in the middle of that? And that's why you know, I have, you know, if I have time, I go and, you know, visit with other people. If I have time, I listen to a book, I try to immerse myself in some other things that will challenge me to be better and to work a little bit harder. There's the last one here before we roll out of here so we can get ready for work. Everyone is, you know, just kind of challenge you to get better and to keep working harder every single day. You become unstoppable when you work on things people can't take away from you. Things like your mindset, your character, and your personality. When you think that things are not going your way, things are not going well for you, you have to be willing to work on yourself. I used to spend my time working on trying to be better than the guy right next to me. And what I realized is that doing that had created this challenge within my head that was unhealthy because I was always worrying about what was the situation? How does the circumstances of their situation differ from mine? And everyone's situation is different. What can I do? What can I do in addition to? To beat that person, to be better than that person, to compete with that person, because I'm so competitive. And what happened is it created this unhealthy situation in my head, because now I started doubting what they were doing or how the situation wasn't the same and how it can be comparable and how it wasn't fair. And the fact of the matter is, is it's never going to be fair. It never will be. You think about baseball and you think about an umpire calling balls and strikes. It is a it is something that from the outside source, you can't stop. You can't control what he perceives as a ball or a strike. But what you can do is you can make the adjustment and attack what you think he thinks is a ball and a strike, right? So you have to be willing to do that. But the competitiveness that you have has to come within. Again, it's that intrinsic thing. And like, I want to be the best me that I can be. So I'm challenging myself and I'm competing against myself to be better than I was yesterday. That is the best thing that ever happened to me when I realized that I am in direct competition with myself and no one else. And how do I fix that? And how do I? fight that situation.
I want to say thank you guys for hanging out today. Thank you to my Patreons, Nikki and Anna Mellon. Um, just getting ready to send Alan, uh, Anna some stuff. And uh, if you guys subscribe on TikTok, I'll send you some stuff. Also, if you're a subscriber on the Patreon, you'll get some stuff too. Make sure that you go to Shaping Success with Wes Tankersley. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Got to get to 3,000. I'm not quite there yet. It's going to be a while. Need about 600 more plus more subscribers to get to 3,000 subscribers. Um, thanks to Michelle, Frank, Lance, and Nikki for subscribing on TikTok. If you guys hit that subscribe button on TikTok, you'll get notification that this comes on. We do this every morning. It's about 5 o'clock Mountain Time. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of other times that you can think about, but uh, Eastern Time, uh, what, 7? So get your day started right. Come hang out. Morning coffee. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success.